What is going on, everybody? It's Alex coming back here with another video. And today, we are going to be doing an AFC South three-round mock draft. Now, I just got a bit of time to make some videos for y'all, and I got sick as hell. So, apologies for that. The Lord just does not want me to make videos for y'all. However, we're still going to be rocking with it. And we're going to be going through this. And this is probably one of my favorite divisions. So, that's why I wanted to come back after not 10 days and just have a good time with y'all. So, hopefully, you guys enjoy. If you guys are new, hit the like button, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. You hear this with everybody. All right, we're going to have some fun here. We're going to relax, and we're going to have a great time. So starting off with the number one pick, y'all know where I'm going. Uh, even if they're here, I still think you need to give Davis Mills some time of development. I don't think this team is ready at all to be able to drop another quarterback in. The offensive line, it has its ups and downs. Obviously, the tackles are pretty solid right now, especially if you move Marcus Cannon to guard. Most of the line is solid, but Marcus Cannon's getting old. Don't really know how much more life you have left in Marcus Cannon at a high level. Uh, you still have two big pieces of the offensive line that need to change. And then just the entire team itself is pretty lackluster. So I really don't think dropping a quarterback like Spencer Rattler that's on a pretty dominant team like Oklahoma is going to change something. However, we do have one of the Lawsons as one of our edges with a big lack of the other side. KT, Kayvon Thibodeau, Ohio, Oak, no, Ohio State, uh, Oaks Christian alumni, he is special. He's unique. He is very similar to what you'd find in a Chase Young, just dominant from the get-go. You take him, and then you build around him. I'm personally – this is where my bias is going to come out. I'm personally not a big fan of this quarterback class. I don't know enough yet, and that's kind of weird because we usually know something about a lot of the quarterbacks beforehand. Of course, there's new guys that come in every year. Talk about Zach Wilson, uh, even Trey Lance. We had a general idea, but – like it's this is probably the weakest class that I have covered myself personally. I think it's very deep, but I just don't think it's very top heavy. So to me, I think there's better value later on if you want to go that route again. And to me, KT is just unpassable. So that's what we're going to be doing right here. So at number three, we got the Jags on the board. And this is an interesting situation. Obviously, we're not going quarterback here. Uh, but it's like it kills me because I want to go Derek Stingley. But our entire like we our, our entire corner core is pretty freaking solid. Like I mean, we could we could have Henderson be the slot and just say pretty much screw it to Sidney Jones. Uh, we could do that. And honestly, I wouldn't really blame the Jacksonville Jaguars for doing that because Derek Singley's a fucking G. And then you have him, Tyson Campbell as well, as CJ Henderson. But I think that's a little rich, and I think that's a little bit improbable for them to go pretty much Tyson Campbell's a, essentially a late first at number thirty three, and then for them to go. Derek Stingley Jr. at number three. However, there is a couple routes that I would think about. Evan Neal, I've just started falling in love with him ever since I actually I started hating him. And then I watched his progression throughout the year, and I was like, wow, this guy actually is just extremely young, but he's learned, and he looks so much better. And then he's athletically a freak. So for me personally, I go Evan Neal here. Even though I know we went Walker Little in the second, I don't care. Evan Neal's an absolute G. I love him. Kyle Hamilton's a Kyle Hamilton's amazing, amazing though. He is the clear cut number one safety in the class. I don't have faith in Andre Cisco. He has a lot of time to develop on a team that well, Trevor Lawrence kind of you you that's your Super Bowl window. And once he gets his big contract, the Super Bowl window closes quite a bit. And I, if you're at number three with Trevor Lawrence, that kind of means that you really do need to make sure it's on that rookie contract because so far. Obviously, this is a big hyperbole, but he's not able to do it himself yet. So we're going to be rocking right here with Kyle Hamilton, and that's going to be the way it is, guys. You guys can, of course, leave your comments down below. Tell me who you would have taken, why. Uh, obviously, our opinions are going to differ. Evan Neal at 11 to steal. He's probably my guy of the draft. That's kind of rich for me to say a guy in the top five is my guy. He's my favorite player in the top right now, uh, besides KT, because obviously KT is generational. So number 22, that hurts the living hell out of me because I wanted to go Jalen Weidermeyer here. I know Ferkser is pretty solid. He had a pretty good year. He's been pretty consistent. He's on a one-year contract, $3 million. Don't know if we're going to be able to continue to afford that. However, there is somebody else on a one-year contract for $1.75 million. That is something that I would personally look at very heavily, and that is going to be the slot wide receiver because I'm literally bugging on his name, Josh Reynolds is going to be probably manning that slot for us, unless you want to put A.J. Brown there. Um, 
I think Traylon Burks would be an unbelievable trio with AJ Brown and Julio Jones. I'm just saying I'd be a huge fan of it because Traylon Burks is huge. He's a dominant dude over the middle. He's kind of like those, he's like a joker tight end, which you could of course use him in that role or else I'd be going guard. I think Saffold has one, uh, one more year left in his contract after this one. So he has two more years left. He's also 33 years old. That's probably where I would be going. It's a tough one because there is a lot of routes, in my opinion, you can go for Tennessee, but I'm going to go with the fun route. I'm going to go Traylon Burks here. I think he can man the slot and play very well. You can put him on the outside, given his size as well, and I think he'd be perfectly fine. And that also kind of hurts what I would do for uh, the Colts because I'd be looking for Traylon Burks right there as well. However, I'm looking at a left tackle here. Rasheed Walker is someone who needs a lot of development, but... I mean, I think Zion Nelson is not. I, none of these guys are surefire to me. I think if you really want to get into surefire territory, we could uh, we could look into the later rounds. And I think this is a little bit disgusting that they have him ranked down here. But Thayer Mumford, I'm a big fan of him. Pretty damn solid bookend left tackle, or I, he might be the right tackle. I'm bugging. But the tackles for Ohio State are absolutely pretty, pretty damn great, right? I think that they're going to be solid NFL talents. Maybe not top end, but they're going to be good enough to be able to start. And this team, you got Fisher for a year, right? I don't know if you're going to be able to afford bringing Fisher back after that, especially when you have other contracts to deal with. So I'm going to look at a guy, Zion Nelson, because he is used to Derek King, who's more of a mobile uh, quarterback here. I'm personally going to be taking him because I do think that apart from my guy down here, uh, Thayer Mumford, the tackle class isn't really great because I think Obina Eze, I'm pretty sure he was the guy who was on Memphis. Uh, if you guys can go back and watch my videos about him, I pretty much called him a fat ass all the time, which is quite hilarious, but he just is so slow. So I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of the tackle class so far. Obviously time can totally change that. And that's exactly what we're going to see. So at number 33, uh, this is an interesting one. Cause you already know, I have a big, I have a huge love for both these guys. And I was talking about how center needs to be a priority. We did just lose Nick Martin for a good reason. Uh, he, I think he was pretty much a douchebag the entire time. So uh, I personally think Tyler Linderbaum would be a great selection here. You can put him at guard over Sharping if you want. He's just really good. So let's stick with him. Let's have some fun. So number 35, this is an interesting spot because I think we could go with a surefire wide receiver here in Drake London, who I'm a big fan of. By the way, they brought Brandon Joseph from the 40s to the uh, first round. I'm very happy about that. Personally, I think that Drake London would be an excellent addition. We do have DJ Chark. I think we're, I'm pretty damn sure we're going to resign him. However, I don't believe that, especially if we're at this ranking with how good of a team we have, which again, this isn't my rankings. Uh, I think that it's time to upgrade the offense. Now, a lot of people like John Mechie. I don't. I think he's a third round prospect at best. Uh, Justin Ross, pretty damn risky. We can talk about the other injury prone guy, George Pickens later on. I think Drake London is a stud. I think he's a superstar. I think that he could be a monster for Trevor Lawrence. However, on a realistic note, Justin Ross seems to be a pick that Urban would do. He's getting the chemistry going. You know, Justin Ross is pretty lethal. So take your pick of the poison. I'm going to do this because I want to be a little more realistic. We saw ETN get drafted as well. Uh, Let's just cater. Let's cater to uh, our starting quarterback. So, that's going to be the best thing we can do right now. There's also a tight end. I, I think they took out Wiley, which would irritate the living hell out of me. They didn't. I have Josh Wiley as a first round tight end. So he's going to be definitely taken. <laughs> I literally think that he's going to, I think he's better than Pat Frarmuth. And I don't really understand the disrespect right now. So at least you guys know that I don't just follow this board. It's definitely something that I am very strong in my opinion in relation to that. But at number 65, I, oh my God, are you kidding me? Oh, I, I can't do this because I, again, I would have Brandon Joseph go in the first and I don't want to be really repetitive, but at this point I'd be looking at a quarterback. This is where it's like, okay, we can bring in some quarterbacks for quarterback competition. Slovis. I personally think I'm not even a big fan of Slovis, but I still think it's kind of BS that he is here. It's unrealistic. Maybe on my own ranking sheet, he would be here, but you know, I still think he's an early second. And that's, that's just me. Uh, Matt Corral, I have him, I believe is my number three or number four quarterback in the class. My former high school quarterback. Uh, he would be interesting to put into a situation like this. 
I, mm, I mean, honestly, it wouldn't be a bad situation at all for him. Again, it's more realistic for Matt to be here than Keaton. So out of respect for reality, uh, we're going to go Matt Corral. Have some fun. Why not? You know, I think that he is a top 15 player in the draft class, but that is me being hopeful for him. So number 67, we got the Jags. And if I'm not mistaken, have we taken a guard for the Jaguars yet? I don't believe we have. Uh, that's something that I think is very paramount for us to do. I think it's something that we need to emphasize is the fact that we need a guard. And to me, Cade Mays would be pretty damn excellent if you want a more mobile. They're, he's damn good at run blocking. And I think every single Tennessee lineman will be great outside of Tennessee. It's just what they do. Uh, Tennessee is just a pretty terrible program. Ben Brown out of Mississippi, I'm not a huge fan of personally. I think I think uh, Boston College linemen are good, but they're kind of used to more of a ground-heavy approach. So for me, I think, honestly, Cade Mays would be a bit better suited. You do have more athletic quarterbacks there at Tennessee. I think that he'd be a pretty damn solid lineman as well. He'd be good in the run-blocking game. Uh, he does have tackle versatility. It's just – it's a third-round lineman. So – I think that there was some time where Cade, uh, Cade Mays was going to be like hinted at as a very, oh, Marquise Hayes hasn't been drafted. Jeez. Uh, it's been a, it's been a while. I've seen Marquise Hayes on a couple of drafts of the past years, but I think that Cade would be able to push himself up to a certain level that maybe would be able to benefit everybody. Uh, and at number 86, Tennessee, I'm thinking I just pulling the trigger on Ben Brown. Right here, again, just somebody who can develop Mississippi. I don't have faith in him as number 59 player. 86, that, that makes sense. So personally, I'd probably go Ben Brown because I think Matt Corral's mobility will be able to transition him very well into the Tennessee offense. So let's do it. Let's go Ben Brown. Why not? It seems like the algorithm doesn't like Ben Brown or um, Lindstrom or anything. So it's a little bit annoying because that's why you do see some uh, repetition, but we get some good, we, need, we get some variability in there, which is something I appreciate. So number 88, uh, I don't believe we were, we got a second round pick, right? Cause that might've been for Carson Wentz, which is, I mean, like cheers, right? If they're at this spot in the draft at 24, that's a good sign. That means that Carson Wentz at least kept him afloat, right? He kept him in the playoffs. So we got a tackle. Now we probably need to get one more weapon because I'm not hundred percent sure if we are going to be able to withstand having another contract issue uh, with our star wide receiver, who I'm blanking on, bugging, oh my God, I see his face in my mind, T.Y. Hilton. So uh, obviously I'd be looking at George Pickens here, but we don't need another injury prone wide receiver. I think Ty Freifogel could be a nasty, nasty receiver, very under the radar. Jahan Dotson is somebody who I think would be too Paris Campbell-esque. So I don't really think he'd fit very well, even though I do like him. He is somebody who I've written down. Rambo, the literally skin and bones himself. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Honestly, we might just still go. Like Hazelwood's pretty good. Ooh, Hazelwood's actually pretty damn good. Uh, I'm going to choose Freibogel, though. I think he'd be a pretty damn solid option. Pickens, again, we could just go with the upside there. Uh, but out of let's have some fun. Jadon Hazelwood. Why not? I think he could uh, blossom into a true number one. And that that's probably going to be all the picks for us. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video with that franchise, guys. So check that one out as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.